This creepypasta is called Shh. I was a fifth grader in elementary school. I was a brat, and my best friend Kiyoshi was no better. We were always getting into trouble for the pranks we set up. One day in the middle of the summer, Kiyoshi got ripped a new one after he pissed his parents off too much. He suggested that we run away together. I was hungry for adventure, and this was just too much for me to pass up. We both packed our bags full as we could with juice and snacks and manga, all the things a young boy thinks he'll need. And after we each had our dinner at our homes, we met at a nearby park. It must have been about 8 p.m., but we were just kids. What do we know? We discussed our options, of which there weren't many. We eventually decided on a small hut in the middle of a nearby field. We lived in backcountry Nagano, and the moment you left our little village, you would be surrounded by fields of rice and other plants. The fields were spattered with farming equipment, hay bales, and little huts to store various things in. There was a particularly dilapidated looking hut that seemed not to get much attention, and we picked this as our base. We looked around inside to see what treasures there may be, a manual tractor, a pile of hay, and that looked to be a good substitute for a bed. We turned on our battery powered lantern and enjoyed our snacks and juice while exchanging manga. We felt like we had finally tasted freedom. How long was it? Mm, I can't be sure, but at some point we heard something strange outside. Kiyoshi and I jumped and hurried off to turn the lantern to a close. Was it one of our parents coming to find us? Or maybe the owner of the hut? We burrowed deeper into the pile of hay and breathed shallowly to avoid being heard. Shh, shh. It was an odd sound similar to something being dragged over gravel. Shh, shh. Whatever it was was circling around the hut. Oh, what is it? I whispered softly. Should I go check it out? Kyoshi asked, somewhat less scared than me. He slowly got up and crept closer to the window. I peeked out of my hiding spot, only to see Kiyoshi jump backwards. An old woman was outside in the field. The woman's back was bent, and she was so thin that she looked like her bones only supported the skin hanging off of them. Her white hair was very long and very messy. What? What the heck? Kiyoshi asked me in a tiny voice, but I didn't know any more than he did. The woman was dragging a bag that seemed to be made of linen or hemp. It was tied shut with a long piece of rope, and that was what the woman gripped onto and pulled along. That must have been the sound that we heard. Shh, shh, crap. You think, you think she's a mountain witch? We, we were both shaking. Slowly we pulled away from the window. I was just ready to sit back down on the pile of hay when Kiyoshi knocked over a hoe or a spade or something. The sound echoed through the hut louder than I could have imagined. I jumped up and looked out the window. The old woman was running towards the us at a speed faster than I could run. I pulled Kiyoshi down and we burrowed into the hay. Bang, the door slammed open just as we covered ourselves up. I covered my mouth with my hand to hold back a scream building up in my throat. Who the hell is in here? The woman's voice was gravelly and hoarse. Her eyes seemed to glow as she looked around the room. I ain't gonna do nothing, so just come out. I could barely see her through the grass I was hiding in, and my eyes focused on the bag she had with her. It was moving as if something was alive inside. I stared at it when suddenly something jumped out. I somehow managed to avoid screaming, but I doubted that what I had saw had been what I think it was. It was a hand, maybe? Down the woman kicked the bag when she saw the hand that was trying to get out. She picked up and threw it back into its prison. I think Kiyoshi and I both thought we were going to die right there from fear. Maybe here. She took a large pitchfork and slowly made her way over to us before we even had a chance to get out. She began stabbing at her hiding spot. Kiyoshi and I were in tears at this point as we tried to dodge the onslaught of her attacks. If the pile of hay hadn't been as large as it was, both of us would have died, I'm sure. We just continued moving further and further back towards the wall as the mound began to come apart with each stab. We were desperately hoping that the pitchfork wouldn't reach us. I still don't know how long we hid in that pile of hay. Huh, maybe it was nothing. We heard the pitchfork land on the floor as she tossed it aside. The sound of her footsteps echoed loudly as she went over to her bag and started dragging it behind her. Shh, 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 shh. 
It got softer and softer as she walked away. Even after the hut remained completely silent and quiet for some time, Kiyoshi and I still didn't move a muscle. She's gone, right? Kiyoshi whispered. I think so. But neither of us wanted to leave our haven. We stayed huddled up and unsure of what to do next. I suddenly felt a breeze coming through the wall. That must be why it didn't get hard to breathe when we were stuck beneath all that hay. There was a hole about five centimeters across right behind us. I put my face closer to the hole to see outside. You look good enough to eat, boy. The woman's voice came through the hole and was followed by her bony hand. She grabbed hold of my face and began to pull. I let out a scream as I realized that the weird smell coming from her skin was that of blood, and then I passed out from fear. When I came to, I was at the fire station. Kiyoshi had also passed out, and at some point, our parents had contacted the authorities to help find us. Some firefighters had found us in the shed. Our parents were pissed off, but they were happy that we were safe. We told our parents what had happened, but they insisted it was just a dream. I knew it wasn't though. The mark from where the woman's fingers touched me are still on my face. The story we hear about today talks about the possibility of a mountain witch, also known as Yamaba. The mountain witch is very famous throughout Yokai, Obake, and Yure history. If you're interested, you should look up more in the Hyakumonogatari covering this creature and more. Until next time, I'm Unrested and this was Jay Pasta. Have a good one.